Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. I wanted to test out a vengeance in the T2 Electric Abyss. I've been testing this out quite a few times before. I mean, we're on tranquility right here. I have quite a bit of confidence in this fit, but I think it would be a cool fit to just practice with. I think the overall the vengeance is a pretty cool ship. And I was thinking in the future, I want to start another T0 to T6 Abyss series, or maybe T0 to T5 series, we'll see. But at least a different type of Abyss series that is focused on missile based ships. Because right now, our T0 to T6 Abyss series is basically a series that I focus on getting to T6 as quick as possible by any means necessary. And I, found, I feel like that one of the quicker ways to do that is to go through the Amar route with beam and pulse lasers because... Uh, you can do the electrical sites, and electrical sites, generally speaking, are quite easy compared to the other types of sites. But you can also get some really good loot from doing dark and firestorm sites, and even other types of, uh, of filaments as well, because of the filament price being very low. If you're going dark sites that have very, um, that have, that have very like low uh, filament cost, then you pretty much exclusively want to go for missile-based ships in almost all cases. And if I were to hypothetically make a line of ships for doing dark sites, then I definitely want to have the uh, the Vengeance, or maybe even a Hawker, we'll see, being one of the lower tier ones, because this Vengeance right here is very strong. It can do T2 electrics. And why do I say electrics, not darks? Well, the reason is because the whole point of me wanting to do the darks is because the filament price is low. The thing is, T3 and up, that's when you notice a big difference in filament price. T1s, T2s, all filament prices are basically the same. So it's just going to be overall easier for using this ship in electrics because it'll give a capacitor bonus and it'll also go quicker because we can use EM missiles, you know, doing more damage in that way because their enemy resists are going to be lower. So I think that then if you say I was doing like a dark series or maybe a missile based series, we can say a missile based series, I'd first start off in probably electrics or something like that, maybe darks, like the very, very low tiers when I'm just getting started because darks are very good for like getting your defensive capabilities up because they reduce optimal range of enemy ships and increase your velocity so you sort of get like a really good uh, defensive capability but the thing is if you're able to do different uh, filament type that is cheap like the t2 electrics which basically cost like nothing then it would be better than doing t2 darks because it will go quite a bit slower because we don't have the reduced em resist and also uh well, it might be in some ways good because stuff will get easier close to us, but I think it will still be a bit quicker doing the electrics, plus we'll get a really good capacitor bonus. That's why I love the, the the Vengeance for this reason, because we can use EM missiles and not get any penalties. For example, if we were to use a Hawk, then we would be restricted to kinetic missiles if we want to get the most optimal damage, and that is not as uh, good for in the electrical side. Here, the Vengeance overall has lower DPS than the Hawk, but we can use all damage types with equal amounts of bonuses. So I just wanted to do more testing of this. I've tested it before, and it's worked out pretty good, but I was just inspired to use it a bit. Just thinking, like, oh, what could we have as a missile-based series if we were to do that? Okay, got the filaments here, ammunition... Let's go into the abyss. I've got no implants as well, just in case. I don't know if uh, Vera Stellar Cartography is going to get popped soon, because uh, I said that it was reinforced. It might go pop, so I don't want to leave my implants in there for a long time. But I mean, we're just doing a site. I doubt it's going to get destroyed while we're running this abyss site. But I don't want to log off without implants, because, okay, obviously training time is going to be missed. But the main thing is I don't want to lose an expensive implant set. Agitated. Electrical four fleet. Come on, come on, come on. Wait until the session time. Let's go. The Vengeance is really powerful. I've got lots of resist mods because we need to have a decent buffer to be able to withstand wrecking shots. That's why I got like pretty high EM resist, thermal resist rigs and everything. Just so we can maximize our buffer in the case we were to get popped okay let's go for entangler first maybe even aegis because they are going to get closer i think quicker these aegis no the entangler seem to be wanting to get closer personal okay let's go just brawl and that's all it is just brawl pop this guy tank so good I'll just sit here and just tank away and our auto cannons don't seem to be doing a whole lot, unfortunately. But it's alright, we just tank these guys. Got an MWD so we can tank it quite a bit. I'm gonna go for Aegis right here. He does a bit, actually no, we've got an escort because he's closer. 
Well, I guess we need to care about taking out the high damage dealers because uh, they are. Uh, we are attacking so good. Only five targets. Mm -hmm. Aww. The main types of uh, waves I can see causing problems here are the Rogue and Valkyries. So that's when I would want to go with Javelin, I think, because I don't want to get like 10 kilometer range here with uh, Rogue and Valkyries. It's going to be go really bad then. We do tank a lot, but I don't think we tank enough to take on two Rogue and Valkyries. There we go. Almost completed this wave now. Buy a bit of cash over there. It is a pretty expensive fit we got right here. And something I actually want to test next time is some cheaper armor repairs. Because we can actually use Corellia A types instead of these Centis. And we'll have less uh, less repping power, but we will have more capacity to spare. So that is one benefit of going with the Corellis. But we will uh, have like 52 instead of 60 HP per second. But they are a lot cheaper. Each repper, the Corellia A type, goes for. I think 30 million. Each one of these goes for like 89 million, something like that. Grab the loot. And for the little amount of little loot we get right here, we really don't want to have to spend too much. Oh, he's going super fast. Let me go back to the gate. Popped. Okay, good. So this is the main issue with the vengeance. It's been a little bit slow. A little bit on the slow start because it doesn't have so good damage bonuses. It's mainly a tangy boy. A bunch of snare casters over here. The we find drones, we might want to take them out so we don't take full damage from the rogue drone battleship. Take, attack this one, maybe. Rockets have just like debilitating range. Their range is just so so short. Go for Twillet over here. And you know what? I was actually googling what these. Uh, well, I stumbled upon, upon uh, me procrastinating, actually. <laughs> when I was procrastinating once from work, I was just Googling random things. And I stumbled upon the word Twilit. And Twilit actually is a name for different, certain types of the depths of the ocean. There is, I think, Bethnic and Endobethnic, something like that. And they are actually... They, they are uh, different depths of the ocean. So Twilla is like a bit of a more superficial layer of the ocean. And you got like Bethnic, which is like what you find in T5 and T6. That is uh, what you find in like the lower depths of the ocean. So I have the Twilla layer and that kind of stuff. I think Twilight maybe, and they've changed it a little bit, something like that. I just know that. So ooh, this is, seems to correlate quite well with the Abyss actually. I'm going to orbit this guy quite quick. Orbit right there. We can just burst him down with missiles. What is his resist profile right here? Uh, yeah, it's good to go with EM and armor as well. Might be thermal is good, but I still think even when you can take into consideration of the weather effect, it'll probably be better with the EM. You could perhaps push him a little bit, push him towards the gate, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, it's taking a bit of time to get through this big boy. Got minus 30% EM resist as well. It can be better with minus 50%. So this is like a good time tester right here. Using the Rage Rocket. Mjolnir Rage. Actually, all bit a bit closer so we can actually hit a bit more with our optimal range. Oh, uh, water cannons over here. Oh, he's going away from us if we turn off the MWT. You can see here you've got different like, levels of the ocean. You got like I think I think Twilight is somewhere up here, maybe this one. Uh somewhere here. Where is I don't see Twilight anywhere. But you've got I think the Photic. I think Photic is the way you the name of the T one rogue drone overmind. And then you've got like a Bathonic, I think, and that's T four, T three. And then Bethnic is this one right here, the lowest one. And Hadal, actually, I think Hadal is maybe T3. Abyssal, Bathiel. Yeah, there's many different types of layers here. I just fun seeing the origin of the names of the Rogue Drone Battleship because I was wondering where it actually came from. Well, I just hit with my missiles, please. Because the thing is, they're so quick. So even though we're eight kilometers away, our missiles have to travel a bit of extra distance just 
to actually hit. And it's, what is this? I can't in range and hit. Maybe I should have used Caldari Navy here because of this uh, ability to hit them is really bad. I can go to... Where's Caldari Navy range? 12 kilometers. There's hardly any difference. Rockets are just horrible in terms of their range. I think the rockets need to be buffed a little bit. I think they need to get be given a bit of a better range. At least on some ships. Maybe not a Gama because that is already got a crazy range. It'll have basically equivalent of like light missile, standard light missile range if it, the rockets get buffed in terms of their range. Renewing layer shock, okay. This is very easy. Attack the strike needle over here. Ooh, 9 million, decent, decent isk. Raging electrical. You can have a lot more, li a bigger likelihood of getting these kind of nice filaments in T2s than T1s. T1s is very rare. This, sometimes, I mean, it's still rare to get T4s and T2s, but it's not at all as uncommon as in T1s. I'm going to go for this renewing guy over here, because he's going to just remote rep everyone. Let's we'll orbit real close, take him out real fast. Take out this striking Leshak over here. Yeah, but all that is comes from the electrical one. The seven million straight up. That's what I was talking about before. Like the difference in prices becomes significant T three and up, especially T four. But uh, like T two is all they they all cost the same. Like all types of filaments and T threes, you see a bigger difference in T fours. You see an even bigger difference and you really big difference in T five and T six. Okay, last rogue drone over there. He doesn't seem to be kiting as much as that other scrub. But there we go. T2 electric in the Vengeance. Went pretty smoothly. It's a bit slow. It's a bit slow. That's the main downside. But it's a very tanky little boy right here. A little bit expensive as well. It's hard to get it to fit properly if you've not got enough bling on this ship. But it is pretty solid. It's a pretty solid ship. And I really... I would seriously consider this when I'm doing a missile base series. But on the other hand... It might be not so appropriate to use this kind of price ship in T2 levels of a base. I think it would be better if we could find something a bit on the cheaper side. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.